with less humans willing to work these jobs and more robots available on the market, your next meal might not come from the hands of a human. In this video, we look into the trend. Let's meet Stellar Pizza. Imagine you work for SpaceX. The pay isn't as good as you'd expected and the hours are long, but you know that you have a lot to learn from this experience. Like most SpaceX employees, your goal was always to burn yourself out at SpaceX and use that chip on your shoulder to land a way better job later down the line. Well, the day has come and you've left SpaceX. What do you do next? Opening a pizza place was probably not on the top of your list, but that's what Benson Tsai, Brian Langoni, and James Wahawason decided to do with about two dozen of their SpaceX colleagues. But this isn't your average pizza place. True to the futurist minds that created it, Stellar Pizza is more of a pizza food truck chain but with only one worker in the truck, and that worker is a pizza bot. They don't call it that, but that's basically what it is. These trucks are a little bigger than the food trucks you're used to. In fact, Stellar Pizza is using small moving trucks. After all, the bot needs room to work its magic. But the business is well on its way to launch, with a goal to unleash the pizza bots this very fall. You can actually head on over to eatstellarpizza.com and join their mailing list. They'll send you updates on their progress and apparently there will be VIP pizza parties. Talk about blending the exciting and the mundane. Stellar Pizza isn't the first pizza bot business at all. Here's a look at some others. The first business to automate their pizzas was Zume Pizza. This was more of a crazy Silicon Valley idea that nevertheless achieved a valuation of $4 billion. They also received venture capital from SoftBank, the big Japanese holding company that funded the likes of WeWork and Uber. Zume started its operations in 2018, and they too had a pizza bot in the back of a truck. Unfortunately, that venture didn't last very long, and it ended poorly. Zume ended up laying off 360 of their employees, which was pretty much half of the staff. They took what they had left over and transitioned transitioned it to a compostable food packaging company. That's an odd shift if we've ever heard of one. Another pizza bot hopeful is 800 Degrees Go. The brainchild of Chef Anthony Caron, his robots will get full-sized ghost kitchens to work in. Because of the freedom offered by a proper kitchen, 800 Degrees will be serving artisanal pizza, and their head chef will be the stoic Piestro the robot. Piestro is the opposite of Gordon Ramsay. He never loses his temper. He never yells but his food is always cooked through. 800 Degrees Go hasn't got underway yet, but they have big plans. They're planning on deploying 3,600 machines in the years to come. If this business and Stellar Pizza end up working out, the pizza game may never be the same again. Now, we've talked a lot about pizza bots, but what does a robot kitchen look like? They look less like the restaurant kitchens you may have seen in real life or on TV, and more like the assembly lines you might have seen in behind-the-scenes videos of car factories. The robots don't walk around or even roll around on wheels. They're actually arms that are bolted to the walls and ceiling of the kitchen. An engineer can program the robots with different recipes for customers to order. Once the robot is commanded to make a certain recipe, it can grab ingredients from their designated locations and assemble the dish. They can absolutely cook as well with temperature sensing so they know how far to take a certain ingredient. They then put everything together and a human will bring it out to you. And while this video has looked at pizza bots so far, they're not the only ones. Miso Robotics have created the Flippy 2, or as we prefer to call it, the Frybot. This robot is all about manning the fryer and it's actually already deployed in Chipotle, White Castle and Wing Zone locations in the US. The Gulf fast food franchise Americana is bringing the Frybot to KFCs, Hardee's, and Pizza Hut's in the Middle East too. A fully independent robot kitchen would require a robot to handle each station of a traditional line kitchen. But once you've got that set up, a skeleton crew of humans is enough to verify the dishes and maintain the robots. All this tech looks advanced, doesn't it? How far are we into the robot kitchen transition? According to Miso Robotics Chief Strategy Officer, we can look forward to seeing more pizza bots and fry bots in the 
very near future. He estimates them being commonplace by 2024 or 2025, and there are already more of them out there than you suspect. Besides the robots we've looked at so far, Chipotle is testing Mizo's Chippy Bot at their innovation hub, the Chipotle Cultivate Center. The most surprising thing about that is Chipotle has an innovation hub, but before you know it, Chippy will be in their kitchen seasoning your chips. It's expected to roll out to Southern California Chipotle's later this year. The big barrier to introducing robots in the kitchen was price. But now that they're being manufactured at scale, they've become relatively cheaper. Small restaurants will not be staffing their kitchens with robots anytime soon. But the fast food chains can definitely realize the economic potential of replacing humans with robots. That's not to say that robots can fully replace humans in the kitchen. And we're a long way from a robot kitchen winning Michelin stars. But for the sort of mechanical and repetitive work that goes on in fast food restaurants, robots are a no-brainer. In fact, let's look at the reasons why this is a good thing. In the short term, robots will make kitchens way safer. While every city and state in the world has strict workplace safety standards, many kitchens ignore them in the interest of being faster and cheaper. With robots, safety isn't really much of a concern anymore. Not until Skynet is born anyway. You can see that robots are starting by taking over the most dangerous parts of a kitchen operation, from the fryers to the pizza ovens. These were some of the most dangerous pieces of equipment that cooks had to work with, and they've definitely caused serious injuries over the years. The safety benefits aren't just good for the cooks, they also keep the C-suites safe from lawsuits and workman's comp. Another reason why the executives are excited about robots is that they're a big upfront cost, but a negligible running cost in the long run. They can work 24 hours a day, they never need time off, and you don't have to pay them wages. All you have to do is hit them with a wrench when they break. The sheer tons of money saved in hiring kitchen crews can be used by these businesses to expand their operations or invest in other ventures or, dare we dream, increase the pay of the humans left over in their staff. That last one will be important since they'll be needing to pay engineers and technicians to look after the robots. Now, of course, there's the obvious downside of mass layoffs and dwindling job opportunities. Here's the thing, though. That might not matter as much in this case. Despite the fact that there are more workers than jobs, jobs to go around, the National Restaurant Association found that four in five kitchens are understaffed, and there's a downward trend in employment in leisure and hospitality. Obviously, this industry suffered a huge loss of business and employees during the pandemic, but the employees have not come back. There are still restaurants that can't afford bots and can't find humans to work for them either. But really, can you blame the workers in this case? The restaurant industry was rife with worker mistreatment, and kitchen jobs were were widely seen as the last resort of people who needed to keep the lights on. Despite minor victories like the passing of minimum wage laws, restaurants never quite developed an appetite for paying their workers a fair wage and giving them appropriate benefits. The robots are a perfect fit for the kind of workplace culture that restaurants foster in their staff. They can freely overwork them and refuse to pay them because the robots don't have families to feed or rents to pay. That's pretty much the biggest reason why automation will have the easiest time consuming this industry out of pretty much all the other industries in the world. It's kind of depressing to think that the restaurant industry would rather hop onto a new and relatively untested trend of automating their kitchens than actually treat their workers like human beings. But that's capitalism for you. That's it for this video. Are you excited to dine in your first robot-operated restaurant? And how do you feel about the impact of these robots on the job market? Let us know in the comments section below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.